car is freezing and steaming over. Um, week three means 30-ish miles. It's Monday morning. Um, it's seven o'clock, and I'm going to run. And I did the Yorkshire Three Peaks with all my clients about two days ago. Um, so, I mean, to be fair, I feel, feel fine, but probably a bit tight in some areas. So, a nice, easy run. It's a clear sky. I've been really cautious about doing is not being overwhelmed and that kind of sounds probably like a bit of a weird thing to say because it doesn't sound like a choice but I'm learning it certainly is a choice and kind of I currently am the busiest like I've ever been with work Bus you know all that shit really but um you know work's really busy training for a hundred miler trying to document it um and i'm starting to write for the ultra runner magazine which is another commitment um and then on top of kind of day-to-day -day living stuff you know training um feeding oneself meditating family blah blah you know the last week before last i was at the point where i was like i can't do this this is way too much Overwhelmed. So the only reason, oh no, the only reason why I was overwhelmed was because I was allowing myself to be like I could kind of see quite clearly. Right, I'm actually making myself stressed here because I'm trying to do all these things at once, and when I'm doing one thing, I'm simultaneously thinking about all the other next things I have to do, and then kind of projecting my day ahead in my head whereas the entire principle and premise that I learned on the Snowden Ultra and that I applied and that I'm learning through my ascension slash meditation practice is being where my feet are and I realized I can't just apply that to when I'm running what well, I can it's not you know nowhere near as helpful to just apply it when I'm running it's day to day. You can only ever do one thing at once. Then you're so ineffective when you try to do everything at once. And or when you aren't fully committing to one thing because you're almost anticipating all the other things you have to do. So, big realization for me last week. Um, as this week will be similar in the sense of actually putting that into practice. It's ten past six. Um, I'm just going to go for a quick well, meeting a cool human for a quick three to four miles, um, and then I am training afterwards. Um, and yeah, these are kind of really boring videos. I don't really have anything to say other than that's what I'm doing. But I guess it's kind of the point. You look What update on this ultra prep is I bought a new head torch and it's not the size of a floodlight and it's actually way better. Um, Do you have anything to say to the camera, Rachel? <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you bothering us? That's horrible. That's not horrible. The camera can deal with it. So, come on. 
go. Are you have to let go? Sometimes in life, you do just have to let things go. Yeah, honestly. No way. Yeah, it does. Collided with people that you probably hadn't met before. Yeah. You're so smooth. Very smooth. Like, I'm quite stunted. Oh yeah, look at the moon. Oh yeah, that's cool. So it's Thursday, 6 a.m. So, so there's ice on my car. No, it's not. I'm going to the gym. Um, and I was kind of thinking that like, you know, I have many thoughts and, and I, I have much preparation and much kind of things I have for this ultra prep um, to do and I just have no time to do it if I have no time I mean I don't I haven't scheduled my calendar in a way that I can make time so that's something I need to do and I would like to do because it is frustrating me that I feel like I'm just flying by the seat of my pants every day um, without a second to just think oh yeah this is also one of my passions and I also want to pursue this anyway um, so today gym just this little little session and then today tonight tomorrow night I'm doing a big walk I'm about eight miles I big on Friday with some friends um, and then Saturday because I'm gonna be in the lakes rather than driving there on Saturday morning shit like two hours an hour um, I'm gonna wake up in the Lake District and you know I've not ran I've not had like a long run since Snowden the longest I've ran in the last five weeks Kind of six weeks is 11 miles and that upsets me because I love running and I am craving and I feel like I'm just in, in the need of three, four, five hours on the mountains funny well not that funny so that session took me 27 minutes and normally you know a year ago two years ago even to be fair like yeah a year ago um my rules around training was that it's a, it, you know it's i've not done enough if i've not been training for an hour or insert x it's bullshit our rules around training and our rules around what is good and what is bad is our perception and you know there's, there's guidelines that I think we follow or like other people's ideas of you know what is perfect what isn't we make the rules and I think when you try to abide by other people's rules and you you know judge your own actions off of what you think should be done or what you think is the best without actually thinking about the goal you're trying to achieve 
then you get lost in life. What else I want to point out, which I think is very important. So I was planning on doing about 30 miles this week and I was hoping to run today, but my body is just feeling beaten, broken. I've got like, my, my joints just a bit achy. Um, just a few sensations. And on Saturday, so only like five, five days ago, I hiked the York Three Peaks. Um, and while it was only a walk, and while I'm ahead, I'm like, I run ultras, and you know, that shouldn't be too fatiguing. It is, because it's, you know, I was 14 hours on my feet, 65,000 steps, um, 5,500 feet of ascent and descent. Um, and plus, I was running around like a border collie all day, trying to herd the group up. So I actually just got embarrassed. My neighbor was coming out of their door, and I thought, I must run inside. Because <laughs> I'm speaking to a camera. That's something I would like to overcome. Like, I feel like I'm quite, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively a fair bit more confident at speaking to this. But when it comes to people that I don't know seeing me do it, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, when you're trying to abide by a set prescription of, right, I must run 30 miles this week, for example, you're basing what you're doing purely off objectivity and numbers and data and forgetting about the subjective experience of being human, which is, actually, I don't feel very recovered. My overall stress is quite high. Um, you don't take into account the other stresses of your week. And therefore, that's how you injure yourself, because you just keep going like a robot, following these guidelines, these principles, these, these numbers, without actually considering, you know, what is, what is required right now. And I know that today, running isn't, I'm not gonna, why are we getting steamy? Yeah, you know, um, it's trial and error with, with, with your body, and when you ignore feelings, and the amount of training you've done, and how that makes you feel, and then kind of making an a decision that's based on not I need to train or else you know I think that's the thing with compulsive training is that especially with runners they like they, I need to run or else I'm gonna go insane it's like you're gonna burn out and you're gonna break and you're gonna the second you can't run you're gonna have a mental breakdown so it's important and um, so yes yeah, so I'm not gonna run today um I'm planning on doing a nice big run on Saturday as but yeah just give the body what it needs you know there's no point training beyond what your body can tolerate because you don't get any more adaptation so beyond you know gratifying your ego and making yourself feel like you know, that you're doing enough. You're doing enough because you're doing enough. So I've just arrived in the lakes, it's Thursday evening. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, well, wasn't planning on running tonight. Um, but to be honest, when there's mountains like that and the sun's setting, um, you can't not, can you? Um, but just a very gentle, easy, and in between two and five miles, um, it's getting dark. Well, I wrote in the dark, I hope. So, is the day of mountains. Um, so I've been in the lakes for two days, which is great. Um, but today morning, I'm going to do some loop that I found online. Uh, the weather is not ideal, um, but I believe I'm going to be going up three mountains in the lakes. Um, it's about 2,000 meters of ascent in total, 20 miles. Um, so it's gonna be quite a long one, I think. It's currently nine o'clock, so. So yeah, um, I'm always quite, uh, Nervous is the wrong word, but you know, in, in anticipation of doing something like this because um, I don't know the route, I mean I'm following the route, but I've never been there before. The weather, um, cold, foggy, ending up on a ridge, but you know, just gotta hope it'll be alright. So, I have a feeling, well maybe I'm making it worse, but I think it's been quite hard. I mean, obviously, but like, I've not done a long, long run like this with the many mountains and this kind of weather for like six weeks. So I'm just trying to be open to discomfort, hard, and all that. So, um, like a mile in, um, I realized I am rushing so much. Just in about 250 meters in the space of, well, oh, like it's less than a mile. Um, pretty high up, well, from where I started, and I had to power hike most of it because of the ascent. I'm getting, I can feel myself getting annoyed at 
the fact that I'm not running, and it's because I've not done this for a long time, well, over a month, but you need to pace yourself. And also, like, look at this incredible view, right? Today is about being able to stop and look at that. As much as it's training, it is also an outing, and I'm not gonna run and try and redline, and my heart's gonna be at 190 BPM. <laughs> Went about 450 meters in two miles, which is fairly steep. And I mean, firstly, look at that. Secondly, um. If it gets dangerous, I can just turn around and go back. It's unreal. This is fucking steep. Because I'm not going to come up here. I was looking at it and I was like, that is fucking steep. The path and I kept stopping every two minutes. Being like, nope, fuck this. Near the top. And I remembered, fear is just a feeling. And I when I went to Snowden, way scarier than this. I've done worse. <laughs> So I'm about six and a half miles in. Um, I've just come off that trail that was kind of behind there. I'm now going up Robinson, which I believe is that, and there is some cloud coming in. Um, probably rain. I can feel the, the, the air feels different. But yeah, have a wow. Look at that. That's awesome. You can see that like, moving across. But I've uh, I just then, I think that was a lovely little stretch that, but started thinking like, all right, I've done six and a half miles, I'm doing 18. I've done, basically started calculating how many meters of elevation left, how many miles left, how long left, what time. And then I was like, no. Fixation on the end removes any enjoyment from the thing you're doing. Um, so, but it's like a, you know, it's a, it's a thought and a feeling that will always crop up. That's completely out of your control. What is in your control is if you allow it to either just be a thought or start thinking about it. That is steep as fuck. But let's give it a go.
having um, done 1300 meters of ascent um, is quite a lot to be honest. It's about almost 4,000 feet. Um, and I think this is the last kind of climb. GoPro's died. Well, I don't know how many miles I'm in. I've been out for fucking ages, but I just went along on top of that. And not gonna lie, like I was looking at a map and I was like, that is wrong. Like, I am not going across there because it's literally either side. Like, there is not much between each like drop and it's fucking steep as fuck. Um and well, that was the route, and I was like, okay, I'm not doing that. Um, but obviously I did it. It was actually absolutely fine. Okay, where the fuck is this taking me? I don't know about you, but this just looks like I'm just plummeting off the edge of the earth. Um, but yeah, then when I was at the top, there was a, a full-on hailstorm and the wind. And I did have a moment of literally like, because I wasn't actually the schedule I thought I'd be. What is this doing? Yeah, but, uh, but, but when I was at the top, the wind was literally, and it started hitting. And I was like, oh my fucking God. But I'm fine. Um, I'm actually really proud of myself because I was not going up there. Um, okay, now I've got the one looks like a really, really rough descent all the way down. So look at that. So this is a really fun descent because literally from all the way that you can't even see, it's literally like this and it's so bloody slippy that I'm literally just trying not to, not to fall and die. Um, I think, fucking out, I mean, I don't want to be too soon, but... I think I've done the majority of the mountains. I think I'm coming back down to ground level now. And I've done at least the scary, scary, scary ones. Um, but I'm also not sure. I've got about six miles left. Um, but from my watch, I've got much elevation left. So, so yeah, but this is the current terrain and it's steep, muck steep. So just trying not to, you know, die. Um, but look at that, it's beautiful. It's also like one o'clock um, and I was not this place. I was gonna be out this long, but I'm honestly not bothered because this is literally an adventure and you know, that's why I want to spend my time. So adventure we go. The last, the last peak, and then the miles over there. last one or two miles and I'm finally on ground. I've been literally above like 500 meters for like three hours and that is not exaggerating. Um, so it's nice to be on the floor 
on the ground. It's also 3 p.m. 17 miles in, five hours in. Um, I'm officially on flat land. I've just checked the map. I thought I was going to be very near the car. I think I'm about another three miles away, to be honest, which I was not prepared for. However, I'm good. One will be where their feet are, and I'm grateful for a runnable surface. And that I'm not on top of a mountain in the dark because I was getting worried that, that was going to work out. Holy shit, I underestimated that. <laughs> that took me five and a half hours. It's currently 20 past three. I'm going to drive home, I've got about an hour and a half drive um, and I'm going to find the service station to get a sandwich or something because I had breakfast about nine hours ago so yeah